This video with Robert Thurman was originally broadcast Sunday, April 22nd, 2018. To learn more about the work of Robert Thurman and Tibet House U.S., please visit BobThurman.com. Happy Earth Day, and thanks for tuning in. I am moved in thinking about Shakyamuni Buddha's life to start with, and how he, sitting under the Bodhi tree, before he could attain perfect enlightenment, which he did, uh, that next morning, he had to cope with the devil, whose name is Mara, in the Indian imagination, and the Indian, you know, heaven. And uh, that devil is a very difficult tempter, who tried to tempt him with first with lust, and then with fear and aggression. And, um, the last temptation was a sort of mental ignorance one, where the devil went to him and said, Okay, you were not enticed by my daughters doing their dance of seduction. You were not overwhelmed and frightened by my demonic uh, armies, which tried to attack you, throwing mountains at you and bombs and whatever. You repelled all of that. But on top of that, you... How come you're asserting that you're going to be a Buddha? Who asked you to be a Buddha? And by what right do you say, I'm going to be a Buddha and save all beings from suffering? You know, aren't you being arrogant and ridiculous saying that? So Buddha said, no. He said, he returned back to the devil and he said, well, you are king of the devils, the Maras because you, at one time when you were living in hell, you had a moment of compassion for one of your fellow devils. And from that moment, you then became, that, that, that good karma of being somewhat empathetic and compassionate to another suffering, which you certainly are not manifesting now as a devil. But you, because of that one moment, you rose to be at least the head of the devils. So the devil then said, aha, so you ha are my witness that I had that karma and therefore it has now given me this fruition. So, but you say you did, so then Buddha said, I did infinite previous things for other beings. I totally had compassion even when I was in hell to other, uh, other demonic buffaloes. We were pulling plows through the nervous systems of suffering beings. And I felt sympathetic, and I was killed by a devil herdman. And I did also many other things, gave my body, my life, my wife, my friends, my property, my kingdoms, my everything, my eyeballs, and bloodstream, whatever it was I gave, life after life. So then the devil said, well, you are my witness that I did one good thing. And who, do, who, on, who on earth can be your witness that you did all those good things that you are saying? So in that response, the Buddha said, Earth is my witness. Mother Earth is my witness. And he placed his right hand down with the fingers extended below his knee, touching Mother Earth, showing his connection to the Earth. And then Mother Earth came out of the Earth, actual Pertivi, like Persephone, Pertivi, as they say in Sanskrit. She came up out of the Earth part way, her upper part of her body, and she began to recite the different previous life stories of the Buddha, where he showed his generosity, his ethicality, his compassion, his tolerance, his creativity, and so on, all his meritorious actions. And the devil said, drat, and he went back to his devil heaven and thought of how, for thinking of more ways how he could trip up the Buddha's uh, deeds, thinking, well, he'll become a Buddha, I can't stop him now. But uh, he, maybe I can trip him up as he develops a teaching and tries to help the beings on the planet. I can prevent him from saving other beings from suffering, which I like to keep them in. So that's, what, that's how Buddha did it. So his Buddha's earth-touching gesture was the beginning, was an initial earth day in the Buddha's mission, showing his sense of interconnection to all of life. 
And then when he attained enlightenment later that morning, he first remembered infinite previous lives, where he had been every single kind of being or any aspect of the earth and any kind of species and whatever it was, and he remembered all of it and therefore identified with every single form of life, having been one himself, at least once in an endless time. And he also then became second, he remembered and became aware of all other beings, how they had lived and died infinitely, and therefore how he had been entangled with all of them, which meant he was completely almost like one life force with all of them. All beings of all species, good, bad, including the devil, Mara, anyone. He'd been all of them, and they'd been all of, you know, all forms with him, positive and negative. He realized all of that, and then attained nirvana bringing all of that with him, actually, because of understanding the illusoriness of time. Even though other beings had not yet reached a form where they could be self-aware and have the complexity of intelligence that are required to become a perfect Buddha, he realized that they all would, and he also he realized that he would have the infinite, all-pervading omnipresence to be there to help them do so and make all the right choices even though he was knowing his connectedness, but also knowing each one's separate independence that he couldn't force them. They had to do it through their own choice, through their own action. But he would be with them to see that they had the maximum help in making all the best choices throughout all of their lives, whether they're in human form or not, whether they're in the form of a slug or a bacteria. The Buddha is a positive bacteria who helps the other bacteria learn to behave better and magnify their being bit by bit toward Buddhahood. So, so Earth Day means, <clears throat> therefore, actually, Nina and my youngest son, whose name is Mipam, means invincible, undefeated, a name of Maitreya, the future Buddha, who will come in tens of thousands of years from now, if not hundreds of thousands which indicates the Buddhist vision of the future, that the planet will not be destroyed. Even the most stupid human culture, such as the materialistic one that we now inhabit, modern materialistic one, which is very, very reckless and destructive of the environment, will not succeed in environing it and destroying it because its members will awaken in time, are awakening now in time, to realize their interconnection, their indelible and immortal, and in a way, future interconnection, because dying will not make them remove from their connection to life, all life. So they just cannot get away from other species, they cannot get away from the planet, other planets even, but, but why mess up this one? They will, we will do that, we will master this situation for sure. Love and compassion and intelligence will master the recklessness, stupidity, and ignorance that is currently wrecking the planet. So, so Buddha, and Buddha is, on, on top of that, it is not just a random sort of mechanically, you know, fate-directed thing by some sort of inscrutable fate or negative fate or, you know, horrible thing called entropy, which is kind of deified by materialists into the devil, or into hell sort of thing, the, the, the materialist form of hell, it will not succeed. We will defeat it because by our intelligence we have, and we do every day. And Buddha also is, millions of Buddhas, not just Shakyamuni, millions of enlightened beings who develop true mastery of mind, and therefore of matter, uh, are all there helping us all and helping us come around to the right decisions and choices to not destroy ourselves, but to, in fact, exalt ourselves with the realization that we are the earth. We are each other. We are other species. They are us. And we are responsible. Each one of us takes responsibility for all of that. And there will be no destroying of all that. Even we will die as individuals, of course, but we'll be reborn and we'll continue bit by bit. And those of us who are more generous and more intelligent and more connected and save lives and save earth and save plants and save people and so forth, we will be reborn ever more strong and more powerful and more vigorous, whereas those who are foolish and ignorant and reckless and who out of, out of short-term greed wreck things in order to gain more profit and more money for themselves and more seeming uh, 
you know, disconnected power and abusive power over things, they will be reborn after they will die also. Of course, everyone dies and is renewed. They will be renewed weaker and weaker because of behaving like that. So we will inevitably succeed. There is no doubt about it on Earth Day. And our, as our Mipam son symbolizes for us, our youngest, who was born on Earth Day, April 22nd, that is his birthday. And that was his mother's day at the same time. And so everyone must be Mipam also, of course, because um, future Buddha, actually Bhimalakirti, one of my favorite models in life, the critic, the ultimate critic, he even teased Maitreya where he met him in his heaven, said Maitreya lives or one of Maitreya's visits to earth. And he said, what's so special about you that you're going to be a Buddha in next life? Because you can't be a Buddha until everybody's a Buddha. So everybody's going to be a Buddha in your next life. So you're not, don't single yourself out like that. He gave him this deep, wonderful critique of the most hallowed future loving Buddha that will come in the future of Maitreya, Mipam, Ajita, as his Sanskrit name says, Ajit, you know, still a common name in India, Ajit, meaning invincible or undefeated. So, so this is great. And don't despair, but vote. Take responsibility. Get out. If we want to have 75% voting uh, percentage at least, minimum, not the usual 30% that you get in a by-election. Never mind, it is the president election, this one. And it's our way of unelecting this destructive government, which is the last hurrah, as someone rightly said, of the negative people destroying things, grabbing profit and wrecking things and pumping carbon into the air and so on in a wild and woolly manner. You know, Pruitt and, and, uh, and Zinke, Pruitt and Zinke, huh? Trump, Pruitt and Zinke, what a, what a really TRZ, Terz. What a terrible triumvirate and um, Sessions and, and uh, Perry and really, really, we can make some kind of anagram out of it all of the sort of most destructive possible bunch of grizzlies, you know. Uh, they're really so silly and they're unhappy themselves, of course, but they're trying to wreck everything and we mustn't allow it. So you take responsibility, you vote, this, you control both houses of Congress. And then that will stop their destruction. They, they at least hold it in suspension and then come next to it will, you know, redo democracy where we can have even a proper presidential election in 2020. And there'll be somebody really wonderful. We don't know who yet, but a wonderful environmentalist person will definitely come forward in 2020 without question. Maybe it'll be Al Gore. Maybe, maybe it'll be, maybe it'll be Miss Hillary. Maybe it will be, you know, Oprah, maybe it will be someone, but it'll be some wonderful, marvelous person. Kamala, might be Kamala, a wonderful person who will really empower the alternative, what is called alternative, but actually should be and will be from now on the mainstream. And then every day will be Mother's Day and every day will be Earth Day and we'll get past all this racism and speciesism and sexism and ridiculous behavior that has been causing the destruction of things on the part of unhappy people who feel disconnected themselves and therefore cannot enjoy themselves, but unfortunately go think that by owning and grabbing, they'll become more connected. Whereas by doing that and depriving in the process and depriving others, they become more and more disconnected. On the other hand, those who are more connected by empowering others, by seeing to the success of others, and there are business people who are like that. My friend Mark Benioff is one of them, and they show that true wealth comes from empowering others and helping others succeed, which is really the essence of the merchant mentality, actually. This militaristic grab everything from everybody else is actually more like a violent militaristic type of mentality and does not lead to wealth leads to destruction and poverty in the longer run, although can result in some short-term grabs like the destruction of the beautiful city of Troy and grabbing all its looting and pillaging at one time and then it's not there to produce more beauty. That's the problem with the military one. So militarism and consumerism, hatred and greed magnified by the ignorance of nihilistic materialism, uh, this 
this now will be brought to an end. We're reaching a point in the planet very soon where we'll have a really, truly great new age. Earth Day will be everywhere and we'll all really have a great time. I guarantee you, I have assurance. Take care. This Earth Day broadcast was brought to you in part through the generous support of the Tibet House U.S. membership community and the listeners of the Bob Thurman podcast. To learn more about upcoming trips with Robert Thurman and friends with geographic expeditions, please visit bobthurman.com. Happy Earth Day.